Hi everyone, we're here today to talk about the Perlick FOB and how it can save you a couple bucks behind the bar. We'll have some helpful ends for your bar staff in terms of operating the FOB so they can use it to their advantage. And we'll also introduce you to a instruction card that will help folks who are in the cooler if they need a quick reference for how to operate the FOB while they're changing a keg. Let's get down to this. So let's start out by discussing how the Perlick FOB operates. So the goal of this device is to save all of the beer in the beer line so it gets served to the guest. So to that end, what we do is while we're pouring the beer, we keep an eye on the beer going in the glass. And in the past, when the keg ran out of beer, we got all kinds of shots of gas and foam and flying around the bar on the customers on ourselves, right? Well, now what we're going to look for is a complete stop of the product flow. That's because the float will have dropped in the core fob in the cooler. We have to match it by plugging up the other end of the, of the line and that's at the faucet. So we need to quickly and positively close this faucet. By doing so, we'll be able to go back to our cooler now and tap a new keg, fill up the fob, vent the fob, dislodge the float, and now we have one solid hunk of beer between the keg and the faucet. So we get full flow of beer when we open the faucet. No foamy bursts, no gas, just straight beer flowing out of our faucet uninterrupted for another keg. Likely the most important thing to pay attention to is the flow of the beer out of the faucet. We want to ensure that while we're pouring the beer, we, we're, we're observing the stream, if we see that start to fall off at all, so it's got a, a nice angle coming out of the faucet, if that starts to, to slacken a little bit, it means the pressure is starting to drop in the system and it's time for us to close the faucet. That's a signal that the keg is no longer delivering beer to our system because the fob has dropped the float in the back. So that's super important. Now, if you're on a very short draft system, your cooler's just on the other side of the wall, you're gonna see almost an instant shut off of the beer flow. You're not gonna see this slow slackening of the flow. You're just gonna see it turns off. That means, boom, quickly and positively, we shut the faucet. So we noticed the slowing of the flow at the faucet and we closed our faucet quickly to trap all the beer back into the cooler. So now it's time to go to the cooler and make a keg change. So when we get to the cooler, the first thing we do is we identify the keg that needs to be changed, we pull it offline, we get our new keg in position, we clean the valve on the keg and the coupler, we tap that keg and we drop the handle on the tap. That's step one, first step. Step two is to come to our fob and we're going to vent it. And what the venting does is it allows the beer to move up from the keg into the fob to fill our chamber. Uh, and we want to get make sure that we're entirely full of beer on this chamber. One important thing is to look at the beer that's in your line between the fob and the keg and make sure you don't have any extra gas bubbles in there. Uh, we want to vent all those out so they don't come back to bite us in a few minutes once we think we've got a new, new line set and ready to run. So completely emptying the line and the chamber of beer, all the bubbles out. That's step two. Step three is to dislodge the float, which is going to be down at the bottom of the chamber of the fob. Uh, to do this, we move the red lever uh, up to the red position. This will dislodge the float. You should see the float float up to the top of the uh, chamber. Then we turn it back down into the green position. Green is the run position. This ensures that when our keg runs out of beer, the float will be able to drop all the way to the bottom and trap the line between the fob and the faucet at the bar. So we've spent a few minutes discussing the operations of the Perlick fob. We've seen what it should like look like when you open the faucet, right? Clean beer coming out after a keg change. Uh, we've talked about really observing the flow of the beer and trying to shut that faucet off when you see it slowing down or slackening so we can preserve all that beer between the faucet and the keg. Uh, we've also shown you what it can look like if you don't do these steps in the proper order or you don't close this faucet quickly enough. We can get a lot of foam coming through the line and waste a lot of time, beer, and effort, uh, which we don't want to do. So let's go back to the basic steps. Observe the flow, right? Make sure we notice when it's, it's turning off. After that, the three most important steps in the cooler in sequence. Change the keg. Vent the fob and the entire line between the keg and the fob. And then dislodge the float to reestablish flow to the bar. So that's the Perlick fob. It's easy to use. It'll save you time. It'll save you money. It'll save you beer. We'll see you next time.